What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on Yahoo with a 10-team half PPR mock where we will be selecting from the sixth overall position. Should be pretty interesting. And while we wait for this thing to kick off, a reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree with these picks? What do you think of the squad along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. And lastly, uh, make sure to get yourself a copy of the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you can want at a great value. Top 150 overall player rankings in standard and PPR formats. Individual player bios, tiers, projections, along with general fantasy advice. Details in the description. But with that being said, let's get to this draft. We are on the board and we've hit the jackpot because we're picking sixth overall and a guy by the name of Christian McCaffrey is still available. Let's not waste any time. Let's uh, just absolutely smash the draft button on McCaffrey. And I, I want to show you guys why this happened. First and foremost, it's half PPR scoring. And I understand it's not full PPR, but PPR nonetheless. And in those circumstances, Christian McCaffrey... Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, he belongs in the conversation of the top overall pick, but Yahoo has him ranked uh, a lot lower than other platforms, and you know this is something I talk about all the time. Doing your research, doing your due diligence on you know what platform you're drafting and getting some uh, exposure to different platforms, seeing where they rank their guys is a great way to take advantage of of messed up ADPs. And this is the case for Christian McCaffrey because usually he either goes in PPR formats, either first or second overall. I just got him sixth overall because the first five picks were Taylor, Austin Eckler, Dalvin Cook, Cooper Cup, and Derrick Henry. Um, and I, I, if, if Christian McCaffrey plays a full season, there's absolutely no reason why he should be going sixth overall outside the top two. Like, forget about it. Uh, but let's let's quickly here see what we have available to us. There's a lot of great options, but you know, even at running back still, but I've already got Christian McCaffrey. Travis Kelsey has made it back to us, and this is a 10-team league, so getting any positional advantages is a big deal. I'm going to get Travis Kelsey here. Two huge names, two absolute studs with our first two picks, McCaffrey and Kelsey. I love that. Uh, you know, if I was going with two running backs, I would have gone with Aaron Jones here. Uh, and I would have been very happy about that. You know, there's something to be said about, um, you know, giving some backup to Christian McCaffrey because he does have that injury history. But getting him sixth overall, I think the reward is absolutely outweighed um, or their risk is absolutely outweighed by the reward, I should say. To me, that's incredible, incredible value. Um, so I love everything about this start to this draft. And again, let's quickly look what happened afterwards. So, you know, we had Derrick Henry Cooper Cup go before us, just kind of recapping that a little bit here. Then Najee Harris, Joe Mixon, Justin Jefferson, Nick Chubb. Uh, Nick Chubb has no business being in the first round of any type of PPR drafts. I'm going to go ahead and say that right now. Um, so I don't like that pick. Then a huge run on pass catchers, Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, CeeDee Lamb, Stephon Diggs. We went with Travis Kelsey. And I'm going to tell you right now, the way this draft has started, we're winning this draft. We have the best roster in this entire draft because we just got Aaron Jones in the third round. That's not going to happen all that often. I, I'd say that's never going to happen. Uh, but hey, that's how this mock draft broke. And I'm not going to apologize for it. Because I would have taken Aaron Jones in the second round, like 10 picks before this. And I would have taken him in the first round ahead of Nick Chubb. This is absolutely ludicrous. We've got Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones and Travis Kelsey. This is shaping up to potentially be an A-plus type of mock draft. It doesn't happen often, but that's the way it's going right now. Again, let's recap what made this possible. So there was a run on some pass catchers to begin the second round, which uh, specifically at the wide receiver position, which allowed us to get Travis Kelsey. Uh, I wouldn't have tr uh, gone CeeDee Lamb ahead of Stephon Diggs. No way there. So uh, I don't agree with that. Um, then you saw after our Travis Kelsey pick, Alvin Kamara, Javante Williams. Again, classic example of Javante Williams being overvalued. No way you should have him ranked above Swift, Barkley, Aaron Jones, like even Leonard Fournette. Then Josh Allen going in the second round. That'll happen in some drafts. You know, a quarterback going 
in the second round. It shouldn't, you know, it should probably be in the third round, especially in, um, you know, in these 10 team leagues. And again, I, even though I said it with Travis Kelsey, that getting a positional advantage is key. Uh, the quarterback position is much deeper than that, the tight end position. So, you know, I can get Kyler Murray probably the way this thing is going in the fifth or sixth round and be golden. So um, I feel pretty good about this. Then DeAndre Swift went in uh, the second to last pick in the in the second round, followed by Mike Evans. Great value on Swift. Great value on Evans. Uh, Saquon Barkley with the first pick in the third round. Great value there as well. Uh, then Leonard Fournette. Then goes Mark Andrews. I think that's the way it should be. You know, him going a little bit after Travis Kelsey. Then Debo Samuel and Tyreek Hill. That's what made us getting Aaron Jones possible. Um, you know, Tyreek Hill is a guy that I'm, I'm struggling a little bit to rank right now. I have him as a top 12 wide receiver, but, you know, I'm not 100% sure if he's going to stay there, uh, what the situation is going to be, uh, but uh, he definitely shouldn't be ahead of Aaron Jones. We're back on the board here. We definitely should be going wide receiver. Uh, we've got a lot of options, though, you know, in terms of wide receivers. I do like Michael Pittman here. I do like his upside. I also really like somebody like an Allen Robinson later on. Let's go with Pittman. I think he has the highest upside out of all these guys at this point in time. Um, you know, where else could we have gone? We could have gone with the Travis Etienne at the running back spot. I honestly think that there's a chance that we can still get Etienne um, and, you know, have him as an absolute stud of a flex. And I'm going to be very, very happy with that. Um, but I, I do think we needed to invest the pick in a wide receiver. And the one that we got, you know, I think he's got like Keenan Allen type of upside in, in PPR formats. Uh, Matt Ryan to me is an upgrade over Carson Wentz. Looking at some of these other selections, you know, uh, after our Aaron Jones pick, you saw Keenan Allen, Cam Akers, David Montgomery, James Conner, uh, good value on Conner, then AJ Brown, Zeke in the fourth round, good value there, J.K. Dobbins, Antonio Gibson, Michael Pittman. We could have gone a quarterback, but I think that would have been way, way too early. Again, you know, the way this thing is, playing out, I can potentially get Patrick Mahomes and stack him with Travis Kelsey in the fifth round. That's nuts. Um, we then see Brees Hall, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I wouldn't be tra uh, dra drafting Brees Hall ahead of Travis Etienne. No way. There goes Patrick Mahomes. So uh, we might see a little bit of a run on quarterbacks, but again, we could potentially get, you know, Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray. Oh, there goes Travis Etienne. So we get sniped on that. Uh, definitely would have been my pick there, but regardless folks, you know, this is still playing out very, very well for us. And let's see if there's anybody that's been forgotten at the running back position. Nobody that I love. So I'm not even going to focus on that. Yeah. ETN would have been the pick there at wide receiver here. Jalen Waddle just went, I really like Mike Williams. I really like Allen Robinson. I've said that before. Um, but here, I think this is a good spot to go quarterback, you know, potentially get Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson. So I probably just going to pull the trigger on that right now. You know, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. Uh, I have him ranked a little bit higher than that of Kyler Murray. So, I mean, already our quarterback and tight end situation here is absolutely tremendous. We've got a tier one guy, Lamar Jackson, and a tier one guy in Travis Kelsey. We got Christian McCaffrey. We got Aaron Jones. So what I'm banking on here is that we maybe see a little bit of a quarterback run and some of those wide receivers that I had pulled up, um, you know, kind of are available for us because ideally, ideally we would get, um, again, Mike Williams, Allen Robinson, I'd be all right with either one of those guys. After Lamar Jackson, you see Darren Waller. Like, he was still available. That's insane value. George Kittle is still available. Miles Sanders, Deontay Johnson, DK Metcalf. There goes one of those quarterbacks. Joe Burrow goes off the board. There's no way in hell he should be going ahead of Kyler Murray, in my opinion. Uh, right now, we just need to survive three picks. Um, and as long as it's not Mike Williams, Allen Robinson, like in that order, we're going to be very, very happy with the way this thing breaks. Again, George Kittle still being available is absolutely just crazy. Um, so, oh, there goes Mike Williams. Let's see if this next pick is Allen Robinson. If it is, I'm going to be a little bit upset. But, um, you know, I think that uh, we'll still be able to, you know, get a guy that we really like. It's not. It's George Kittle. Tremendous value on that. So I'm going with Allen Robinson here. I'm not even, you know, second guessing it. And right now, again, just to recap our team, 
It's Christian McCaffrey. It's Travis Kelsey. It's Aaron Jones, Michael Pittman, Lamar Jackson, Allen Robinson. Like Kyler Murray is still also available. So uh, we could have gone, you know, Allen Robinson first, then Kyler Murray. Um, so again, I do want to point that out. Ideally, again, I would have gone Travis Etienne in the fifth round. That's literally the only thing I can nitpick right now uh, about this draft. I honestly think it's going absolutely in the best possible scenario out of all, I feel like hundreds, thousands of mock drafts that have done up until this point, the ones that you've seen on the channel. Uh, this, in my opinion, is by far the best one. Again, I realize it's a 10 team league, but you know, everyone here had an opportunity to draft these guys. And a lot of these people have really stacked teams, but I think we are uh, just by far and away right now in the best position. So we're probably going to stick with those two running backs, McCaffrey and Aaron Jones, and just load up on flex guys, load up on depth at wide receiver, clean up there because there's still a lot of good value. Hell, honestly, I might get cute and uh, draft uh, Kyler Murray. That's how great of a value he is right now. That's how cocky I am right now. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, there goes Cortland Sutton. But I mean, getting Allen Robinson is our number two wide receiver. And we basically have a wide receiver one in Travis Kelsey is absolutely awesome. What I'm going to do here is probably go with um, a Marquise Brown if he's still there. Let's see. Dalton Schultz just went off the board. Rashad Bateman is still there. That'd be a nice little stack. Bateman, Lamar Jackson, definitely wouldn't mind that. Uh, but I do think Marquise Brown is the more proven player. And, you know, he's, he's a guy that's going to have higher upside. So I'll go Marquise Brown here. I have a chance ahead of Rashad Bateman. So like already, look at this team, folks. You know, we waited until the third round to get our, no, sorry, fourth round to get our first wide receiver in Michael Pittman. And the wide receivers that we have, you could argue some of these guys have higher upside than him. Allen Robinson, Marquise Brown. This is absolutely sensational. Um, and then honestly, I'm going to do it. If we're in the eighth round and I can get Kyler Murray just because I can, I'm going to draft him like <laughs> I'm going to have two tier one quarterbacks. This is going to be absolutely nuts. I'm not apologizing for anything here. Uh, we're absolutely killing this draft. I said that it had the potential to be an A draft. It's living up to that potential. Uh, but hey, let me know if you agree or disagree. OK, Kyler Murray goes off the board here. Finally, in the seventh round, he shouldn't have lasted that long. That's absolute. That's an absolute travesty. Uh, looking at some of these other picks in between our Allen Robinson, our Marquise Brown, uh, you see AJ Dillon won in the sixth round. I think that's a little bit too, I think it's very early actually for him. DJ Moore, Amari Cooper, CEH, Jerry Judy, uh, Jalen Hurts going ahead of Kyler Murray. I've been saying this, I don't know how many times that should not be happening. Kyler Murray is such a better passer. Um, and sure Hurts has higher upside as a rusher, but n like not enough to overshadow what Kyler Murray is going to do in terms of passing yardage, touchdown upside to be just a more consistent quarterback for fantasy purposes. So I hate that. Then Cortland Sutton, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is an interesting guy here. Um, has some really nice upside if he hits. Uh, Dalton Schultz, TJ Hawkinson, so a run on tight ends, which allowed us to get Marquise Brown. Very happy about that. Uh, then Devin Singletary, Kyler Murray, Tom Brady, so a run on quarterbacks. Uh, Amon Ra, Kareem Hunt, Dallas Goddard. So let's see what we're working at here right now in terms of players. Rashad Bayman probably won't make it to us. I'm assuming he's going to go via, you know, an auto pick or something like that. In terms of running backs, Melvin Gordon ain't a, a, a bad value at this point in time. You know, um, somebody like a Tony Pollard, you know, somebody like a... Um, Potentially somebody like a Ramondre Stevenson, something happens to Damian Harris, just a couple names to throw out. Um, so Rashad Bateman is still here for us. And I mean, this is, I I, I can't, I, I don't know how, how else to say this. This is breaking in the perfect possible way. Like I'm, I'm loading up on all of our guys that I think have huge breakout potential uh, and just absolute, uh, I, I just got a stack in Lamar Jackson, Rashad Bateman. I love that. You know, the way this is going uh, we're probably going to start to see some kickers and defenses go, so I, I won't keep this going for too long, but at wide receiver, there's still so much great value. Like Chris Godwin, um, if we draft him and he ends up playing still the majority of the season and that injury uh, is much ado about nothing, 
He's a tremendous value here. Darnell Mooney with all the targets he's going to see in Chicago, great value. Alan Lazard, um, great value in my opinion. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say pretty much whatever we do here, I think we get an A on this draft. I'm going to wait to make one last selection just to see you know who's available. And uh, then we'll recap our roster again. But I mean, we can start recapping it right now. Uh, at quarterback, Lamar Jackson, I think in everybody's eyes, he is a top five quarterback for fantasy purposes. He's a tier one guy. Uh, we got Michael Pittman, Allen Robinson, and you might say, okay, you don't have like a Devonte Adams type of guy or something like that. But all these guys have huge upside, like Allen Robinson with Matthew Stafford. I absolutely love his upside. We've got Pittman who kind of broke out a little bit last year. Now with Matt Ryan, I think has a great chance to continue Marquise Brown, another guy in that category, Rashad Bateman. I think another guy in that category, all these, um, four wide receivers that we have, I think have top 20 upside, a couple top 15. So I love that. And then, I mean, at running back, how can you not love us getting Christian McCaffrey at the sixth spot? And then Aaron Jones in the third round. And then on top of that, we've got Travis Kelsey. Folks, this is an A-plus roster. Uh, I don't care, you know, I, I, yeah, I, this is an A-plus roster. And here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it even better. I'm going to draft Chris Godwin. The dude might not play a single damn snap this season, and we'd still have an A-plus roster here. So, yeah, um, let me know your thoughts, though. This is the roster we have right now. Uh, do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? Yes, we got lucky here the way this thing broke, but it happens from time to time. So um, very happy about it. Uh, if you guys uh, enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and also make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you want at a great value. Uh, details in the description. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.